controversial statement incoming. I really like Mario Kart 8. Oh, is that why I have that? I thought it was just the wallpaper. The reason I preface our discussion with how much this game just turns me on is that while I love Mario Kart 8, I am also unimaginably sick of Mario Kart 8. December 13th, 2022 is not a date I expect you to know, and yet it matters to me quite a lot because it makes it official. That date marks the point we had officially been toiling away on the same racetracks for 3,119 days otherwise known as the exact amount of time between Mario Kart 8 and Mario Kart DS. I repeat, the same Ape Jesusless Mario Kart throughout the same length of time we waited for Wii, 7, and 8. And we are not getting a new one in 2023, so a series that's dropped a game every two to three years for most of its life is now going well past tripling the high end of that. Uh, sure, you could argue this since we did get Tor and Home Circuit, but you don't have to shit in my lawn or laugh at me to be part of the conversation. And yeah, we got 8 Deluxe, which was almost like a brand new one for purveyors of battle mode supremacy, but as you may know, I've never once been that type of person. I understand why people like it, but to me, Mario Kart has always and probably will always be about racing. 8 Deluxe didn't have a single track that wasn't also in the original. And it never will. The Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass for the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe game that can be played on your Nintendo Switch, home of such best-selling games as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, as far as I'm concerned, may as well prove the existence of God, because I'd given up hope for DLC long ago by then. At that point, we were nearly seven years past the release of 8's final DLC, and nearly five past Deluxe's initial release, and yet all of a sudden this beautiful man is telling me that not only will we be getting DLC of old tracks, not only will tour tracks finally be playable in a game that doesn't have osteoporosis, but there are going to be 48 of them doubling the track count? I was a little excited. Yo! Shroom Ridge? The booster course path. I'm spinning! I'm drooling! 40! <laughs> this is the best video game ever made! I know some people haven't been super in love with it thus far, but in a year with games that make me a bit sick to my stomach, like Nintendo Switch Sports, as well as just absolutely brazen personal attacks on my character, like Mario Strikers Battle League, the Booster Course Pass kept me afloat, man. So that's why we're here today, shortly after the release of the Pass's Halfway Point, to talk about both the good and the not so good. And by that, I mean we're here to watch me defend the worst parts and then go off like a grenade over something stupid and trivial. So at least nothing's out of the ordinary. I know this is genuinely the most obvious place to start, but just let me do it. Good number one, that this shit exists in the first place. It's getting blatantly repetitious at this point, but it deserves to be. A lot of people despise Mario Kart Tour. I play it even though it consistently pisses me off because the series has my crotch in a lock and chain. Uh, what I'm getting at is that even if it feels good every now and then, it mostly just hurts and does not satiate most of our appetites. And that's when I turned to the real kinky sh**. So to finally be back to getting unambiguously fun Mario Kart content is a downright miracle. A miracle that keeps on giving too, since it's theoretically going to continue throughout another full year. I cannot stress enough how much I needed this. But that also means I absolutely cannot continue without acknowledging the elephant in the room. Bad number one, the visuals. When the Wii U version of 8 got DLC, it really felt like the original game just kept going. Every track was perfectly up to the standard of the release batch, if not better, with masterfully done retros like Ribbon Road and Cheeseland, and some fantastic new tracks like Big Blue and Super Bell Subway. When 8 Deluxe got DLC, it was primarily just upscaled stuff from Tor that occasionally looked like this. Maybe adoption wasn't our best choice. I know it's a common thing these days to make fun of people who sh** on games' visuals when the game is still fun. Oh, if all you care about is visuals, then why aren't you just watching a movie? Wow, you really got them there. But while I don't think that's the type of thing that should stop you from enjoying a Mario Kart track, you absolutely can. How you personally feel is just as valid as how I personally feel. But let me at least try to explain why, from a hardcore Mario Kart fan's perspective, this does not bother me literally at all. For instance, I am a filthy shill. Number one is what I just said. No, not the shill thing. 
Okay, maybe a little. But the point is that while pretty visuals rock, they're the least of my worries right now. I've played Super Circuit before. I can, in fact, stare at moldy bread and have fun. But so what, right? I mean, you've probably heard from people that aren't bothered by it plenty of times by now. And surely I would never try to spin lazy visuals as some kind of... positive, right? Alright, I know this is the single most insane thing I've ever posited to you, but I actually do find myself at least a little glad that not much effort's going into these tracks, for one very specific reason. The next Mario Kart is taking over three times as long as the last one. If we're really dropping to one Mario Kart game per console generation, I need that game to be perfection incarnate. Perfection in cart it. I need all hands on deck, putting it together, adding to it, and polishing it. I need no IOUs, no cut corners, and preferably minimal time wasted on DLC for the last game. Sure, the item toggle kinda goes against that, but I'm hoping it's more of a Super Mario Party situation, where they made a cool feature for the new game and figured, hey, why not add it to the old one too? What good is a sin if you don't commit it twice? If the next Mario Kart ends up doing low effort DLC like this, then sure, I think frustration and contempt would be completely warranted. In fact, I'll be right there with you, but I really don't think they're gonna do that. I truly believe the Booster Course Pass is kind of just compensation for the fact that we've gotten caught in an awkward cycle, the equivalent of throwing us a bone while working on the future of the series. And to be completely honest with you, if I have to choose between more tracks hot enough for the magazine under my bed getting added to the one I've been playing for over eight years, but potentially less work going towards the next one, or some six or seven out of ten tracks now, but the best Mario Kart of all time, later, I make my choice pretty confidently. As far as I'm concerned, I've gotten everything I could have ever wanted out of Mario Kart 8. This is all just bonus to me. Now of course, I can't know for sure if any of my assumptions are how things actually work, but even if they aren't, I'm pretty confident that the entire core Mario Kart staff hasn't been needed for anything we've gotten since at least the release of 8 Deluxe, which places their dev time anywhere from 5 to 7 years right now, and makes me think I might be onto something. At the end of the day, if you don't share my, oh god, how might this affect the next game psychosis, or you think that that concept just doesn't excuse anything, okay, you're probably the more well-adjusted of us for it. Isn't that right, Dry Bones? <laughs> yeah. I still don't know why you guys always act like you can't see him. Good and bad number two. The track redesigns and changes. I just could not decide whether this should be a good or a bad, because even though I, brace yourself, generally lean towards positive feelings about them, really thinking about it leaves me split right down the middle. With the occasional exception, it seems like a line has been drawn at Mario Kart DS, with tracks from there onwards usually leaving it at slight changes and touch-ups here and there, and tracks from before then being up for interpretation. The main exception I speak of are that Super Mario Kart and Double Dash pretty much never get changes, I presume because of nostalgia and the fact that sex doesn't need a sequel. Meanwhile, Super Circuit tracks pretty much always get changed, whether that's just shaving off some awkward corners or starting over from scratch? Do not ask me why this happens, because I have no idea. It is very, very strange. But regardless of if we're talking about remakes ported from Tor like Coconut Mall and Calamari Desert, or the Booster Course Pass First remakes like Shroom Ridge and Snowland, the quality is just all over the map. Rock Rock is pretty much just Rock Rock. Oh man, I hate when it does that. But London Loop got centered around this new Chain Chomp gimmick, and when they all get set free and the music starts roaring on that final lap, it goes from bland to seriously awesome. If you want to talk about perfect remakes, look no further than Boo Lake and Choco Mountain. They capture the essence of their original tracks flawlessly while still making big improvements, which is pretty damn impressive. But we don't talk about what happened to Sky Garden. And we especially don't say that it's still a pretty good track, just not Sky Garden anymore. Because I said, we don't talk about it. The other thing that, to me, makes this both a good and a bad is how they're handling Tor City tracks. In case anyone doesn't know, whenever Tor does one of its notorious city escapades, they don't just make a track themed around that city and call it a day. They make that city and then create three or four different tracks using different areas of that one location. This naturally raised the question of how 8 Deluxe was going about including them, because it would be a huge bummer 
to just pick one version, and yet including so many variations of one track isn't completely feasible. But as Nintendo always says, when one won't cut it, try polygamy. Across pretty much every city track, you can find these translucent arrows, and they essentially serve as mobile walls that will move and change to shuffle you down a different path each lap. With this, you can essentially experience up to three different variations from Tor in one single race. It's definitely a novel concept, but I don't really like it if I'm honest with you, because it feels so unnatural. Though, considering the problem, this is definitely an appropriate solution. I just hope it doesn't become a trend for future stuff. Besides, polygamy doesn't look so bad when it's compared to an affair. The booster course pass versions of N64 Calamari Desert and DS Peach Gardens are a lot like Utah. I don't know how to feel about them. For one reason or another, despite receiving no updates to their landscapes, they have entirely different routes from their originals. Anyone who's played 7 or 64 would recognize Calamari Lap 1, no problem. But once you get to the train tracks on Lap 2, there's a little secret you may not have noticed. A giant f***ing steel ramp has appeared. I think everyone who played Mario Kart 64 has tried driving on the tracks and following the train through its tunnel. It was a really cool thing for them to let you do, and there was no quicker way to develop a god complex. But in this version, it's become absolutely mandatory, and the last two laps are more like the sections you'd find on single lap tracks like Mount Wario or 3DS Rainbow Road. Meanwhile in the gardens, the only notable changes are that they took out the ramps near the ending and the completely pointless route at the start. Is nothing sacred to you people? And by the only notable changes, I mean the only notable changes other than the fact that lap 3 sends you into this completely new area and shuffles you through the final lap backwards. On one hand, that's f***ing awesome. Not only are these like getting a retro track and and Nitro Track in one package, but in Calamari's case, reinterpreting a classic piece of Mario Kart history to do it is super fun for me and anyone else who'll be walking down the aisle to the Dino Dino Jungle theme. On the other hand though, it could be argued that you kinda lose out on the original tracks this way, and while I appreciate these new takes on them somewhat, I don't necessarily think they're better, at least not with a full stop. And what in the hell is going on with the ramp? That's the one part I have a clearly defined feeling on and I genuinely despise it. Especially considering that this DLC and this track are using the arrow walls. Would they not do the job without a giant jump scare ramp? Was causing this to happen seriously the best solution? If future Mario Karts want to experiment with tracks changing lap to lap like this, I'd have three things to say. One, it has to be done more tastefully than this. Apparating ramps are lazy and lame. Two, Sonic kinda already beat you to the punch on that gimmick. Hasn't stopped you before, but it's worth mentioning. And three, Yes, my king, anything, my liege, just some sustenance, my lord, please! Bad number three, the murder of obstacles. To some end that I cannot possibly understand, the Booster Course Pass has followed an odd trend of removing or otherwise neutering the concept of obstacles. Of course, tracks where the obstacles are kind of the entire point, like Shroom Ridge and Maple Treeway are untouched, but Coconut Mall? The way the cars move sucks ass now, and they didn't commit any vehicular manslaughter at all until people complained. How about Berlin Byways? Well, you can still be flattened by these womps, but for some reason driving into something bigger than the of your damn cart makes it act like a ramp. I should note that that's how it is in Tor, but that's also a game where your character's a bit larger in comparison to the tracks they drive on, and also one that forces you to do tricks in order to keep up a combo. It just feels wrong here in 8 Deluxe. And for the love of god, you even hit Choco Mountain? If you're not gonna let me put Morton in the hospital, you're gonna need a better reason, because this is just ridiculous. Rock Rock Mountain has the exact same thing, and yet they work just fine over there. What is even going on? Obstacles are fun. They add a little something extra to consider outside of how close to take a turn, and I can't imagine why they'd want to remove them. Thankfully, the non-violence of Choco Mountain's boulders doesn't bother me whatsoever. Good number three. This is one that's a little hard to define, but it really just feels like they're understanding what makes tracks fun again. Now this isn't really a dig at Mario Kart 8's track design, because it's almost inarguably the best in the entire series, but it is to say that 8 as a whole is quite restrictive compared to previous games. Not only have shortcuts been shaved down to essentially just basic off-road and ramps, you f***ing animals, but if you try to go somewhere you're not explicitly supposed to, whether for a shortcut or just for fun, either Lakitu or an invisible hand is gonna pull you away. Unfortunately, these mentalities aren't completely absent from the Booster Course Pass, but... 
they did add the shitty mushroom gourd shortcut back. And I honestly can't believe they allowed the gap jump to exist again. I still check over my shoulder every time I do it just in case. Boo Lake's cut was always pretty confusing to me, and it would definitely make zero sense going into 3D, especially considering how the track was reformatted, but to their credit, they did not remove it. They just changed it so that it would make sense. And not only does Rock Rock still let you glide freely over its starting section, but if you have the mushrooms for it, you can just ignore a huge portion of the track. The law is no match for you. Now you could potentially argue that mostly all of this is Tor's doing, not necessarily eight deluxes, but I don't think that really changes what I'm saying. Shroom Ridge and Snowland didn't start off in Tor, and they both have new shortcuts for Kong's sake, and the Snowland one is incredible. I can guarantee you that this would not have been allowed if it was in the base game. And that ties back to the item toggle too. The game came out over 3,000 days ago, and has already sold over 60 million copies across both versions. This is to ask, why would they even bother? The answer, as far as I'm concerned, is because it's fun as hell, and because they could hear my mouth foaming from their office. To me, this Booster Course Pass era is proof that they get it, and that they really care, which makes me so phenomenally happy. Now if I could just have a talk with them about Sky Garden. But there you have it, my take on the good and bad of the Booster Course Pass. Really, I've just been having a phenomenal time with it and wanted to share. And I really feel like every wave has been better than the last, so... It surely won't be long until it can cook me dinner! I did ignore some of what I consider to be the dumber complaints like the price, because it's 50 cents a track, suck it up, they killed Funky Kong for less. I know talking about Mario Kart is where I'm at my most unhinged, but that's just because I'm so insanely passionate about it. There are very few series that mean this much to me, and I hope I don't come across as too insane. Bad number four, where the f*** are the Double Dash tracks, man? I saw the data mines. I know you're hiding them from me, so... Hand them over, I will have your head! Like I said, I'm just really passionate. Give them to me!